Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to the May newsletter. Uh, my name is Meg from Flow Financial Planning. And this month, I'm donning the new glasses. I guess I'm going to be whipping out a Wall Street Journal article in a little bit. Uh, and before I get into that, I would just like to say, you, you might not read the Wall Street Journal, and, and frankly, I, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, there are vast swaths of this newspaper that look a lot like this. I just I just skip right on over. They make my eyes hurt. Um, but, but I would like to give a plug for the uh, weekend edition of the Wall Street Journal, whose cultural content is surprisingly compelling. I mean, they've got good car reviews, for God's sakes. I, I don't give a crap about cars. The recipes are great. Um, book reviews are awesome. Uh, please just skip right on over the opinion pages. Um, but if you're looking for really interesting weekend reading, Wall Street Journal is your place. So back to the particular Wall Street Journal article that caught my eye about a week and a half ago. All right, you see that? NASDAQ top 6,000 for first time. All right, the NASDAQ, just to make sure we're on the same page, the NASDAQ is index uh, is an index that's dominated by tech stocks. So basically when we're talking about the NASDAQ, we're talking about the health of um, stock in, in tech companies. And this is one of many articles I have seen lately uh, bullion about how well tech company stock is doing. And so if you have, you know, stock in your company, your company is Google or, excuse me, Alphabet, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, good for you. Your stock is, is growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, these statistics are crazy. Um, Class A shares of Facebook have gained 27% so far this year. That's crazy. Um, so if you have that stock, you've really benefited from that. And that's one of the awesome benefits of working in the tech sector is that you do have access to this potential for really great stock gains. Uh, but I gotta say, when I start seeing these news, these, these news headlines, I start to get a little uncomfortable uh, because historically the way things work is most of the gains have already been had by the time media headlines start yelling about it. And, and you know, your Uncle Harry and the grocery store checkout clerk start talking about how awesome stocks are. Uh, so the fact that the headlines are dominated by how well tech company stocks are doing lately. That doesn't make me happy. That makes me up. Uh, that makes me nervous, basically. Uh, so I am not saying go out and just sell all of your company tech stock to make sure you know you don't suffer from the the impending implosion of the tech industry, like you know another dot com crash. Um, but I would like you to do a little thought experiment, and that thought experiment is. Go figure out how much money you have in your company stock, in your a single company's stock, um, and pretend you've lost 80% of that money. Now, I kind of just pulled 80% out of the air, um, but in the dot-com crash, some companies became worthless very quickly. And while that most likely won't happen to Facebook or Alphabet or Amazon or uh, Apple, um, who knows what, which company is going to lose how much of their value? And tech company stocks can be really volatile. So 80% is, I think, a totally reasonable number for this thought experiment. So pretend you've lost 80% of the value. How does that affect your life, your financial life, the goals you've set for yourself, your vision of the future? What kind of sacrifices will you have to make? What kind of adjustments will you have to make to make up for the fact that you don't have 80% of that stock value anymore? Now, for some of you, you'd be okay with the adjustments you'd have to make, right? Like, oh, well, I just have to save a little more in this way or reduce my expenses a little this way or delay buying my home by a few years, that sort of thing. Some of you will probably do this thought experiment and go, ah, ah, and, you know, have vapors or something. Um, and if you are one of those people, you really need to really start making a plan for how you're going to get out of some of your uh, company stock. And uh, I typically like to see clients not have more than 5 to 10% of their net worth in a single stock, especially if it's their company's stock. So if you do this thought experiment and realize that you really should start drawing down a little bit on how much of your net worth is invested in the single stock, 
And you think back to this video and you think, hmm, that woman Meg had some, had some interesting things to say and I like her glasses. Um, give me a call, give me an email. Uh, you can find me uh, on the internet at flowfp.com. You can reach me at meg at flowfp.com. And uh, we can work towards making your financial situation a little more resilient. All right, well, thanks again for tuning in and see you again next month.